Okay, says recording in progress. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. All right, great group tonight, guys. Um, feel free. You guys know how we do on uh, Wednesday nights. Take your phone off of mute. And I would love for somebody to share something positive uh, that's happened for them um, over the last week. Uh, please feel free to use the raise your hand feature if you like. Let's see if I can... There we go. We got a two people. Uh, Miss Sarah, come on in. All right, well, we'll go with Evan. Uh, you guys say your audio isn't showing. Can someone else try to take their phone off of mute and speak up? Hmm. You wonder what the issue is. So it said, so Evan, Evan, go ahead and speak up right now. Hello. Hey, so hey, it looks hey. like it looks like what I'll have to do, unless I can figure this out and I'll, I'll figure it out as Wilson's uh, going through the content tonight. Um, it allows for me when you guys raise your hands, I can individually allow you to speak. Um, but while we're doing this, I'm going to try to figure out how to open it up for the group. But it does work. It just means that I have to do it individually. So I'll. I'll work it out for you guys, but don't don't have this be a reason that you don't raise your hand. I, I really do want to hear your voices. So, uh, Sarah, I'm going to work through getting you. Um, getting you. Sure. Yep. So, Aaron, uh, so Evan, go ahead and share, please. Um, my news isn't really so much as a big positive, but it's just something that happened. Um, I got my schedule for my job for Upward Bound. I'm working for Upward Bound this summer, so I got my schedule figured out. I will be tutoring in pre-calc and geometry. Oh, great job. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, employment. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Sarah, come on in. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you wonderfully. Okay, that's great. Um, well, for me, I started my research yesterday, and I'm really happy. I'm really excited. Um, these two days have been amazing. I think I've learned a lot. I'm doing a virtual reality, um, so I'm really enjoying it. Great job. Um, and then we have Norbaya that wanted to share something. Yeah, I just wanted to share that um, I really love doing research. And for the fall semester, I will be um, conducting an honors independent research with my mentor. And it's focused on scientific writing and scientific communication. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that because I've never really, n n any of my classes, we never really focused on how to like improve your scientific writing and how to communicate science to like different authors. So would, would that be research on research, essentially? Did you drop out? There? Yeah, so there, yeah, research on research. So there are, right now, there's five different books that we will tease apart um, and, and, and just kind of like extract the 
was significant about it that would be more appropriate for like undergrad uh, STEM majors, particularly those in biology. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then we'll also go over like journal articles and um, talk about may, how to write the best way to different figures and that, that's needed for different metrics or measurements. But then we also plan to develop a like a undergrad scientific uh, tip guide um, for yeah for STEM writing. Um, and then the third thing that we're doing is you know I've been doing research for about a year and a half, and we've been uh, writing a manuscript. Uh, so the plan is to actually also develop that manuscript for publication, um, and. Yeah, and then also I'm an English major. This is the last bit. I know I'm talking a lot here, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm an English major, and there are some things, some writing styles, or that that I think I've noticed as an English major. I think could be more incorporated in scientific writing. So the the plan is to also kind of research well what's that relationship, uh, scientific writing and English like literature. What can we um, uh, extrapolate and combine, I guess. Gotcha. No, that's, that's definitely understandable. You know, I think even to that point of uh, styles of writing, I think typically you tend to see, uh, you know, certain spaces converge into this is the exact style that we do here. So usually if you have some kind of maverick that tries to change the rules, you know, it can be a, an intimidating process if that person doesn't have a certain level of uh, confidence. So, you know, no, definitely good luck with that, uh, that research project. That sounds exciting. All right, well, let's go through just a little bit of housekeeping. First and foremost, um, I think I have uh, given pretty much everybody uh, permission to speak. So you should have your audio kicked in for you. Um, you could take your your audio on and off as we go through um, our dialogue tonight. Um, but I'd like to, to go ahead and introduce Mr. Wilson Darko. Um, he is going to take us through grit and resilience tonight. So without further ado, Wilson, uh, the show is yours tonight, man. I'll be here in the background supporting. Um, um, like we always say, guys, bring positive energy. Uh, please uh, be engaging with us as we uh, seek to engage with you and have a great dialogue tonight. All right, I'll be here in the background. No doubt. So first and foremost, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Wilson Darko, as you can see here. Uh, I am the owner of Kofi Enterprises, and through that, I have a brand called Kofi Speaks. Uh, with Kofi Speaks, I pretty much speak to early talent professionals as well as uh, young students as well in various degree programs pretty much to give a good insight on how to create successful roadmaps, as well as figure out what your next steps can and should look like specific to your passions, right? And the goal of today's presentation, you know, speaking on the subject of grit and resilience uh, is to really try to quantify it to some extent. You know, this is a very abstract term grit. It's used very popularly, if you would, in different spaces, has different meanings. But, you know, I want to try to put a, a value, you know, to that, that sentiment. Uh, and the goal is to really highlight how, in many cases, in your story, uh, what will be the defining factor if you get to a certain space or pivotal moment will be that ability to showcase that grit or resilience or that, that stubbornness uh, in losing, if you would, that can sometimes take it. Will yes. Go ahead and share share your screen. Uh, is my screen not sharing? Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Not sure what the issue is. All right, there you go, Wilson. 
We're good. All right, show's yours. No doubt. Uh, so yeah, as I said, I'll pretty much be speaking on this concept of grit, uh, you know, sharing some aspects of my personal experience with grit, you know, giving some insights in terms of, uh, you know, what grit looks like in other spaces. And, you know, really to dive deep if possible, even into some of your particular stories of where you may have had to showcase grit, uh, either in your past or even, you know, more importantly, in the forward steps of your career. Okay, so. So first and foremost, you know, I want to ask the question, um, you know, just to pose to everyone in the audience, and you're welcome to either, you know, put a comment in the chat or just, you know, give your answer out loud. You know, what is your level of understanding of this topic of grit? You know, what, what would be your personal definition of grit as you see it? Is that answer going to be in a percentage, Wilson? Uh, no, so not necessarily. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the, the answer would be in a metric of one of four options, right? So either I'm completely new, you know, I, I don't really have an understanding of it, not my forte. I have some personal experience, you know, minimal at that. Uh, I have a very solid background, but not something comprehensive. And, you know, I've had to, you know, overcome immovable mountains. You know, they could write movies about me all those types of things. So I would be either completely green, have basic knowledge, solid background, or an expert. So okay. So use the chat here if you guys can kind of put your thoughts of where you feel like you are on the topic in the chat feature. And then Wilson, you'll be able to see some of those answers there in the chat box. Elizabeth here saying she has minimal experience. That's understandable. Andre, same thing, basic knowledge. Yeah, so pretty much many people are saying uh, a fundamental understanding of it. You know, they haven't had to, uh, you know, write some kind of Mighty Ducks movie necessarily about them. I don't know if that that analogy is dated now. What a time, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the general gist is everyone has some level of uh, personal experience in it, but it's not something that uh, is very immense. Uh, and that's that's good. That's good. You know, at this stage in your life, you know, you've gotten past high school, you're in now your either undergrad, master's or PhD program and, you know, hiccups here and there, but but nothing too immense, if you would. You know, I think the, the challenge comes into uh, what is the road ahead, right? And how can you kind of leverage your current experiences as well as an understanding of what grit will look like to kind of propel you forward, right? So I think that's something that we can definitely expand on here. We have Omar here. Okay, this, this is good stuff. He says, uh, grit is one of my highest personality traits. It is very important. Uh, I agree, Omar. I think uh, in many cases, grit will be the difference maker between first and second as it relates to a, a you now and the better you for tomorrow. So just something to consider there. So yeah, so as I mentioned, here is the agenda for today. Uh, pretty much I'll give a brief introduction of myself, kind of speak on my personal story uh, and really how I progressed from where I was growing up to where I am now uh, and how grit played a big factor in that. From there, you know, to try to quantify again, uh, I'll go over a definition of grit and some examples of what it could look like or what are the factors that come behind it. Uh, I'll give a very interesting uh, historic spotlight. I use historic uh, liberally. This is a current story. So I think it's something that will definitely resonate with the tech people in the room. Uh, and then finally, you know, on the other side of these definitions and examples, how does one actually build grit? Right. How do you get to that point where you're developing a better, uh, you know, just feeling for it or knowing how to activate it in times of crisis or just in general? All right. So that will be that aspect. And then I do want to give you guys an opportunity for a Q and A if you have any questions or if you want to expand 
on any areas of the presentation. So, but as I said earlier, you know, this is this is I, right? Wilson Garco, uh, nice picture. It looks like a you know stock photo. Uh, but my story started in the South Bronx, New York. Born and raised, uh, I grew up in public housing. Actually, you know, a child of immigrants, uh, first generation everything, if you would, first generation college student. I'm actually a second generation business owner. My mom owned a business. Uh, back in Ghana, uh, which is where I'm originally from, Ghana, West Africa. And in my story, I went from, you know, a household with no college education to graduating high school as a salutatorian, ultimately entering into college, which for many people with a similar background, that would kind of be the end of the movie, if you would, you know, you throw the caps in the air, we made it to college, yay, you know, and at that point, uh, you're kind of lost, if you would, you know, there's, there's no real direction that you've received, or at least in my experience, that I received in terms of how to move forward once I actually got to college. So especially my first and second year, the amount of roadblocks I think were faced or were placed in front of me uh, were actually immense, right? You know, getting into that high school to college transition was uh, very challenging in many aspects. Uh, this was the first space, even in a space of transparency, where I wasn't the smart kid, you know? And then not to say I don't have intelligence, but just going to a school such as RIT in Rochester, New York, uh, this was the first space where, you know, I'm, I'm meeting some of the, the best of the best, if you would, uh, where, you know, I was now someone that coming from public uh, school, essentially had to shift the way that I operated as a student, I had to actually be an effective student this time, right? Uh, through that, I got immersed into various programs while I was an undergrad, including the National Society of Black Engineers, uh, my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and other initiatives as well, including uh, LSAM. And through that process, those programs helped me learn how to be an effective student uh, pretty much starting from scratch, if you would, right? And in those experiences, as well as in academia, many of the challenges that I was faced with, many of which were pretty, pretty much the first time I was dealing with something like that, uh, those were the things that I had to use as kind of a fodder or, or nutrients, if you would, to feed my ambition or my hunger to, to be better, where even if I wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, I recognized that I need, in order to propel forward, I needed to use these things as somewhat of leverage to make that change, right? Uh, and you can also check out, you know, I'll, I'll kind of move on, or you can check out more information about my story if you, if you uh, put your phone up to that QR code and it will point you towards my bio. And then lastly, you know, in my most recent experience, uh, I joined after I graduated, uh, I joined Eaton as a power systems engineer. Uh, that was a very exciting experience after overcoming all those, you know, uh, movie-esque hurdles of college. Uh, I started my full-time role three years ago, uh, to which, you know, I was originally in Philly. Now I'm in New York City, and I'm also a part of one of the employee resource groups, iConnect, uh, through which, you know, I'm having this presentation with you all today. Uh, you know, so, and I see we have Jalissa, in the chat saying that I can relate to that story. Drop a two in the chat if this is a story that resonates with you at all. You know, I, I know this is uh, for many students that come from either an immigrant background, you know, first generation or a socioeconomic challenge. You know, it, it's, it's definitely a challenging thing to overcome. So uh, it's great to see that there's that uh, resonance with many people. So that's my personal story with Grit. Also, we have a, Julissa has her hand up. Would you, we wanted to share something, Julissa? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so um, I didn't understand like before when we were beginning the meeting about the topic. Mm -hmm. I'm really new to it, but um, I just had a couple questions. So does Grit mean, or would the topic mean just like from how, we start in the beginning, like in like 
in so our career or how confident we are in the end? Uh, that's actually a great question. I found that grit is something that is relevant pretty much throughout your entire process. In many cases, how you start can set a strong foundation on your understanding of grit or your ability to navigate with it. Uh, whereas ultimately it is something that even if you don't need it at some points, it can pop up later. You know, using the example of something like imposter syndrome, right? If you've been in a space where you've always been successful, that notion of imposter syndrome may not be as relevant or even that idea of grit when you've able to, under normal circumstances, succeed uh, may not seem relevant. And then you get to a, a roadblock that is unfamiliar to you, right? You get to a seemingly immovable mountain that's unfamiliar to you. And now the question becomes, how will you act under those circumstances, right? So pretty much the goal of this presentation is really to speak on grit from a, a holistic perspective, you know, both from the beginning of your story as well as how it progresses throughout. And something I'm going to highlight in the presentation is the notion of how grit is something that builds up ultimately. So in many cases, that which you started with is what you will need in those, those dire moments. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. okay, cool. So, and then we have Paul here. He says, grit matters more than talent or skill level. Uh, that is debatable. Uh, I tend to agree with that opinion. Uh, some would argue that that's not the case. There's actually a uh, study by one uh, Michael Walsh, uh, and he did a study on PhD students where he argued that grit was not as much of a determining factor for PhD students as other areas such as socioeconomic status uh, or you know, IQ level and things like that. But then there are contrasting studies uh, that, would, uh, that would disagree with that. But uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. It was a very exciting topic, so we'll just move on. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, grit, right? Here's a definition according to the dictionary of grit. So the first definition is grit is a small loose particle a pretty much of stone or sand, right? Um, that doesn't really sound, uh, you know, very exciting. That's not something that would that people would resonate with necessarily. But the reason why I wanted to highlight that is that you know when you think about even if you get something in your eye, right? Uh, it's something that is it's unpleasant. Maybe it's not something that you're looking forward to, but it's something that you can't just you know breeze away just as easily. All right, it, it gets there and now you have to do something about it uh, where, you know, even if you think about the symbolism of it, this small little little particle for this whole, you know, person or adult or, or child or whatever, you know, I think it's, it's interesting to see how even that small thing can have such an impact that it will pivot that moment for you. So in a similar sense, I believe that grit, even if it is that small ounce of something, whatever that something is, uh, it is something that will definitely shift, if possible, uh, the direction or trajectory of your story, right? So I, I think that that's something that you should just, uh, you know, let marinate, if you would. And then the more, you know, popular understanding of it is essentially courage and resolve, right? And strength of character. What I want to highlight here is that the moments where, in my opinion, that you will need grit are not necessarily moments uh, where you are hyper confident, you feel accomplished, you have everything right, everything makes sense, right? Uh, usually you need to show grit under some kind of pressure, under some kind of challenges, right? Uh, drop a three in the chat if that's something that resonates with you. You know, ultimately you show grit in times where you're scared, right? Confidence is something that is you know it's great to have but some moments will come in where you don't feel confident right you don't feel sure of yourself you don't feel secure uh you feel like you're in chaos and ultimately when it comes to something like grit you are showing essentially courage through fear and not just in the absence of it right so just keep that in mind you know grit is essentially showing courage through fear 
and just not acting with the absence of fear itself. You know, we have a couple of people saying they can relate to that, especially with your research. You know, I actually did research uh, in undergrad as well through LSAM. I did uh, research on micro wind turbines. And just as a, a quick story, when I got to my presentation, right, uh, the final presentation over the summer, I am terrified. <laughs> you know, during the presentation, I essentially have, this is an undergrad, mind you, I have a PhD in electrical engineering come up and he's now the person I'm presenting to. And I'm thinking of every possible mistake that I could have made in this uh, research, because clearly this is a PhD, you know, I'm a, a lowly undergrad student, you know, of course he's gonna, you know, once I give uh, my presentation, he's gonna riddle it up with all the holes of this doesn't make sense, this is a plot twist, this is this, this is that. And that wasn't the case. Ultimately, I told my story, right? Uh, in that case where I was somewhat uncomfortable, I spoke with what I felt I understood and accepted what came with it. You know, and what was surprising about it, uh, he was actually very receptive to it. He, all all the, the fire and brimstone I anticipated did not take place, right? He was very receptive. He said, that was a great presentation. Here are some opportunities for growth and left it at that, right? So just an example, very small example of grit. That being said, you know, going into expanding with grit, I have here, you know, grit is something that in my belief is more earned than it is learned. You can study certain concepts and it builds your ability to, to execute or perform with that knowledge, right? I think grit is something that is probably 95% headspace more than just, you know, book knowledge. You know, in my opinion, something like grit ultimately comes down to, you know, muscle memory, if you would. I mentioned earlier that in the earlier parts of your story, if there are challenges that you had to overcome, oftentimes when you get further down the road, you can reflect on those moments and say, you know, if I could get through this, whatever that this is for you, right? Who's to say that this current mountain can't be moved as well, right? And it's something that I think ultimately needs to build up, right? Is, you know, I don't think you can just jump to, as an athlete, just going straight to the Olympics. You need to have, you know, even before that, the, the US trials, or you know your high school competition, your state competition, the national competition, and all of those things can still be terrifying, challenging, uncomfortable. But you think about those moments where you know the difference was just your desire to win. It wasn't your physicality, it wasn't your intelligence, right? It wasn't your rank, quote unquote, uh, standing next to your peers. It was that decision that you made for yourself of I want better for me. So I don't know what that looks like and hopefully I do, but I'm getting there, right? Uh, to that extent, you know, I would also, and then, you know, drop a two in the chat if that's something that resonates with you as well. But I, I would also pivot now to understanding, you know, the roadmap, if you would. Uh, you know, and someone says here, that's a great way to think of summer research, very inspiring. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's with something like summer research, especially, uh, especially if it's a subject you're new on or un, unclear on, or it's a new venture, mm -hmm. you know, having that, that conviction or that choice on yourself of, I want to be successful. So before anything else, I am deciding that that will be my story, right? And once you have that conviction in heart, you can now move towards that goal, right? In order to, to get to that goal now, of course, you have the, the mental conviction, the know-how, that's great. Do you now know the process that you have to get to? You know, oftentimes we'll recognize that, you know, fear is usually strongly attached to uncertainty, right? If we don't know what's about to happen, that's what causes anxiety, fear, you know, distrust, all of those types of things, right? Uh, now the question becomes, what if you knew where you are, where you're trying to get to, and a very clear understanding of what was in between that. Like what was the path to whatever your success is, right? To that extent, 
if you now understand and put the work into know that process, to know that roadmap, to know, you know, what are the contingency plans if this goes wrong, if that goes well, you know, where can I pivot if need be, you know, who are my resources or what are my resources that I can tap into if need be. These are all of the things that will be relevant and I describe as part of that process, right? If you don't have these things as part of your process, it's a different story. That's what kind of will strengthen that anxiety or that fear. Put a one in the chat if that's something that you've dealt with before, that uncertainty when you had an assignment or some project in terms of what you needed to do. You know, was that something that served as an anxiety point for you or made you uncomfortable? And the ones are flying in, right? That's a very common, a very common experience. You know, I dealt with it as well. So, you know, when it comes down to it, you'll notice that your fear is almost always attached to uncertainty. Where if I told you, you press this button and exactly what you want to happen happens. Uh, are you as inclined to be scared in that moment? Right, no, because I know if I press this button, this will happen. So you feel certain in that case, right? You know, someone even mentioned when they first started college, that was a big aspect, same here, right? You know, I'm now entering this world of the unknown in terms of college. So, you know, this is very terrifying thing. So I think being able to, to understand that process becomes critical for you, right? Uh, on the other side of knowing the process, you now have to lean into trusting the process as well. Right, where you can know for a fact that if I do these things, I will get these results. The problem is that sometimes, whether it's imposter syndrome, you know, insecurities, what have you, those things will make us question if the process actually works. And then, especially in the worst moments of it, you know, is this even worth it? Is this something I want to do? Let's say with something like working out or fitness, you have some kind of fitness goal by the end of the year and you get to, let's say three months in, or even you know two weeks into July, usually uh, after the first year of uh, New Year's or the first couple of weeks of New Year's, the gym crowd send, tends to settle down because people stop trusting the process, right? They know what will work to get them towards their fitness goals, but it becomes uncomfortable. So now you have to recognize that that process, if you choose to make it so, will always beat and overcome the uncomfortability of right now, right? So just keep that in mind. And then next up, you know, we have this idea of, of grit and I try to quantify it or understand it in space of this word grace, right? We often hear that term, you know, show yourself grace, show other people grace, you know, move with grace, those types of things. And this is a, a, a phrase that I've coined that I think is very relevant to really most things that you would do in life, where you know this thing that I call the grace gap will often be that difference between the you that you are now or the challenges, or the space that you find yourself in and that better self, whatever that is, right? And in terms of that grace gap, I kind of understand it as this, right? Just very simply put, is the distance between uh, the success that you want and I almost got there, right? It's the, the, the distance between your greatness and the shoulda, woulda, couldas that people like to share. If only I had done this, right? I would have been able to, uh, you know, I, I kind of quantify all of those things as being part of that gap, right? So first, you know, we've kind of just uh, described grit in detail already. Uh, and I'm gonna work backwards with it, right? So I wanna speak on some of the concepts that build on each other at the base you have effort, right? Ultimately, if you provide no effort in terms of the goals that you have, uh, you know, maybe if you're lucky, that'd be nice, but for the most part, you're not gonna actually see, you're not gonna be able to see that, that light at the end of the tunnel if you don't start fundamentally with your effort as your root. You have to show up, right? I want you guys to write that down. I have to show up, right? And then put a two in the chat if that's something that resonates with you. But, but you need to recognize you have to show up before anything else, before anyone else can support you or help you or build on you, you have to show up. So that's what that effort means. Next up, we have that consistency. You know, similar to the, the fitness analogy, I can do five push-ups right now, 
that doesn't make me America's next top model necessarily, right? Uh, I need to do it consistently. You know, success is typically results at a consistent pace, right? So in this case, you have to build on your effort with now consistent effort and showing up on a regular basis, right? Not just in the highest moments. You know, somebody mentioned here, consistency is hard for me. And that's, that was the case for me undergrad as well, right? You know, I think ultimately I had to incorporate consistency into my process and I'll ex expand on how to do that in some of the later slides. Uh, but just keep that in mind, right? Consistency is key. Then we have the center point, your attitude, your mindset, your belief in yourself, right? There's possible for someone to show consistent effort that gets results and you can get to the E and the C, but they never really actually believed in themselves, right? They were just doing must, they were just doing what they were told. They were following rules, they were following procedure, but they didn't actually know what they wanted to do, who they wanted to be or who they are, right? You know, there, there's a, a quote that I, I speak on very heavily and I, I think is very relevant. Know yourself, know thyself, right? And when it comes to that attitude, attitude is your mindset. Do you have a genuine belief that you deserve to be a better you or you deserve to be successful or you deserve to be here that your imposter syndrome is exactly that? It's false, right? Is that part of your attitude or do you have an attitude or mindset of you know downplaying yourself, of believing that you know you're you'll never be good enough, and those types of things, right? And these are very common uh, concepts that people are plagued with. So I think ultimately your attitude it plays a big uh, a critical factor as well, right? That being said, I think results now is something that we often don't hear a lot about. We always hear all the kumbaya you know, terms like, you know, just believe in yourself and the power of friendship. I watch anime a lot. So, you know, the power of friendship and all that type of stuff. Drop a four in the chat if you watch anime. You know, I, I know we're, we're a small, a small group of powerful, you get me? Uh, but yes, so results, I believe, is the, the final presence of these other characteristics, right? You can have all the effort in the world, you can have consistent effort, and a positive attitude and showcase grit, but your results will tell you that if it's being applied in the right place or in the right space in your story, right? So always allow uh, an effective understanding of your results to let you know, am I moving in the right direction? Is there something effective or ineffective about my current process? Is there anything that I have to tweak or that I have to change altogether with this process? Do I have to start over if need be? Right, so just keep that in mind. Seeing a, a bunch of fours, you know, great to see uh, the anime crowd in the mix, right? This, this is great. Uh, you know, I'll give a, a quick shout out to RDC World. You should check out their YouTube page. They do a lot of uh, anime house stuff that are very fun. Uh, but yes, so these are the five aspects of that grace gap, right? So whenever I say show yourself grace, in addition to, you know, the, the kind of emotional aspect of it, this is something to keep in mind as well. Show yourself grace. If you can show up in these different ways, you know, making sure that you're giving effort. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You don't have to be the most athletic, the, the most talented, anything. Effort is completely on you. Consistency is completely on you. Attitude, though it can get influenced by others, comes down to what you sustain and entertain. All right, so just keep that in mind. And then the results, are kind of the you know the the pretty much the outcome of these other characteristics and as you can see here grit as i mentioned earlier is the smallest component but clearly it gets us further to the top of where we're trying to go to so just keep that in mind now this is a a, a spotlight that i wanted to to emphasize this is someone that i definitely resonate with uh, this is idris sandu Right. He is a technologist that has worked for uh, several different companies. Uh, he is the person that was a key contributor to the algorithms for Instagram, Uber, Snapchat, and more. He also was an intern at 10 years old. I didn't even know this was an option. He was an intern at 10 years old for Google. 
uh, the way that he arrived to that point, right? Just let's let's stick a a, a, a pin there. You remember a ten-year-old intern at Google uh, when he was about seven years old, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he is originally from Ghana, West Africa, and he lived in California at the time. And his father took him on a trip back to to Ghana, where you know he took him to Ghana. He took him to their local village, right? And his father took his passport, seized his passport, and left. So the father was essentially abandoning him back in Ghana, right? Uh, that let's let's just take a second to process that, right? This is this is eight years old, seven years old, where he's been abandoned in a, essentially a foreign country. He's not really familiar with anyone there. This is not where he was raised either. And I don't know if anyone has any experience with immigration policy or, or challenges with it. Uh, if an eight-year-old tells me that, hey, I'm actually from the US and I just don't have a passport or any type of documentation to prove it, but I'm from there, uh, good luck getting back, right? You know, and, and many people that have dealt with any kind of immigration stuff can, can resonate with that. So in his case, by some miracle, he was able to, at eight years old, get back to the States uh, without any documentation and stuff and prove he was a citizen and come back. And I, you know, I would imagine he wasn't living with his dad anymore, but he stayed with a family member. And the year that he was able to get back to the US, this was uh, nine years old, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is when uh, he first, uh, when the, the iPhone, the first iPhone was released. And he had an intellectual curiosity for pretty much what the iPhone was and the potential that it could have for the future. So what did he do? He showed up, he gave effort. He went to the library, you know, mind you, he goes to public school. So it's not like he has some kind of high access to information. He goes to the public library and starts doing research on coding for two years straight, right? Nonstop, no one told him to do this. This is not a homework assignment. He just committed his effort towards that. And he did it consistently for two years. Uh, come to find out, there was actually an employee of Google that would frequent that library. And he sees this, you know, eight, nine, and eventually 10 year old kid, you know, showing up studying coding, right? And because he was so impressed at seeing this, he ultimately, you know, spoke to the, the proper channels and was able to secure Idris a internship at Google. This is 10 years old, mind you. Uh, he went on to, from working with Google as a full-time you know, consultant, as well as technologist to impact these other spaces. And he also was the technical uh, genius behind, uh, this is Nipsey Hussle's brand, the Marathon Clothing, which is the first smart retail store, right? And definitely something that you guys should look into more. But essentially, he did all of these things. I'll let you know something. He is 23 years old, all right? Even to myself, this is a story that resonates where he did this from 10. He has what, 13 years of, of experience in tech. He's 23 years old, right? Drop a five in the chat if that sounds nuts. <laughs> you know, so, so I, I think this is just a great example of pretty much that grit, right? Showcasing uh, resilience through uncertainty and discomfort and recognizing I have a bigger purpose here. So my, my purpose is bigger than my, my momentary discomfort, right? So that's just something that I want you guys to recognize. Fives through the floor, that's great. So next up, right, you know, we now, we have that story of Idris, you know, my story is, is much more simple than his, as we can see. But we've given those examples of what grit looks like. But how do we now build grit? How do we get to that point where we're able to, to strengthen that conviction in self, right? And you see this baby, uh, you know, do you even lift, bro, right? He's trying to get those two plates up. Uh, you know, keep going, little girl, you got this. That being said, as I mentioned, these are three different areas where you need to tap into. One, in terms of knowing your true north, right? You know, if, if any, anyone has ever gone camping and that kind of stuff, you know that a compass can be valuable, but in many instances, your compass may not necessarily point to, to absolute true north for certain, 
right? Uh, and in similar cases, people might say you can use, you know, look at the moss on the trees and the moss always points north, or you can use the, you know, the Big Dipper. It has the North Star. And that's kind of my understanding of what true north means. What is that thing that lets you know, this is my goal, my mission, my purpose, uh, my impact on this space, right? Uh, my true north is this thing is above anything else that I could contribute to space, any discomfort, any challenge, any roadblocks. I know that if I just see true north and go in that direction, over time, I will arrive to my destination, right? So it serves you to ask yourself, you know, what is your true north, right? What is your big picture? You know, what is that thing that ties to your greater purpose? And, you know, even from a sea standpoint or, or shipping standpoint, they would usually use the stars to navigate. And regardless of the craziness of the storm and the water and the this and the that, they could always know that true north is exactly where that northern star is. So we just go that direction and you'll get it and you'll make it through that storm. So just keep that in mind, right? You know, write a three in the chat if you've ever had such a storm in your life, you know, and just think of some of the things that you had to overcome in that moment. Next up, there's this concept of putting it in your grit, right? You know, I mentioned earlier, I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And this is a concept that many of the historically black Greek letter fraternities and sororities speak on of grit, right? And you know, you'll see it at events or performances and shows, probates. Uh, but that idea of what we say your grit, or when we say put it in your grit, it speaks to the notion of the challenges that you've dealt with, right? The, the struggles you've had to overcome, you know, use those things as a propellant to move you forward rather than just something that you sit in, right? You know, don't sit in your mess, push up against it so that you can get up, right? You know, there's this idea I always use of, of momentum where if you're standing still, that's what essentially keeps you where you are. You know, if you're not changing essentially your inertia in whatever way, you'll be, you'll be led by the chaos around you, right? So if you stand still in a storm, you become of it. Whereas if you continue to fight against it, eventually that momentum of yours will shift, right? So just keep that in mind. And you can always use the anchors in your story from previous of, you know, for myself, if I could overcome, you know, my experience growing up in the South Bronx, uh, which is definitely not a beach house, right? Uh, if I can overcome that to get to the point of that quote unquote movie ending of graduating high school and going to a four-year school, and that kind of stuff. Uh, what is a tough assignment or homework, right? I survived life and death, <laughs> you get me? So if I could go through that, you know, it, what is it if I have to push through, you know, just a couple exams? Even though they're scary in the moment, I'm remembering that my bigger purpose is bigger than the fear of this now. So just keep that in mind. We have someone saying here, I remember being a special education student and thinking back to that, and it really shows how strong you are. And I've received this opportunity without knowing that it was possible from the past. And it's important to recognize that the you from back then, right, is seeing the moment that you're in now as a blessing, right? So if you were to, to you know, get lost in the now of your moment and see the roadblocks ahead of you, you will forget the fact that, again, listen, I'm, I'm excited to be here, right? You know, challenges and all. Where, where I started this journey is not where I'm at now, right? And that kind of leads me to my next point of remember how far you've come, right? Look at where you started. It's very daunting to see what's in front of you if you have like a lot of mountain to climb until you look back and recognize, hey, I'm already halfway there. Right? Look at how much distance I've gotten through in this process. Look at how much I've overcome, whether it was from the very beginning of my story, even to you know the middle, any type of major catalyst or whatever. And when you stop and think about it, this is only just the beginning, right? You know, I, I would assume for most of you, you're in your you know late teens for the, the younger ones, early to mid 20s 
maybe a couple of slightly above 30. But this is, you know, to think of anything that you're in at this stage as the immovable mountain, trust me, you know, it is on par, even if it doesn't seem like it, it is on par with whatever was in the earlier parts of your story. And there is more for you to overcome. And you standing tall in your moment now will prepare you for those moments down the line. So always remember, you know, reflect on where you've come from, right? Even for myself, and I try to keep this brief for sake of time. You know, I, I went to Ghana a couple of years ago with my dad for the first time. And I learned more about his story of how he ended up getting to the States. And I was thinking, whoa, if this is where I come from, this is, this is his progression, you know, even getting to the point of, of getting to college would have been a miracle. If I failed, got kicked out, all that other stuff, it still would have been relatively a phenomenal thing. So if I could get from a generational standpoint, if I could overcome that, what's a couple tests, right? What's a couple uh, months or years of just showing up when you stop and you think about it, really fundamentally show up, effort, consistency, right? And from that, that shifted for me personally, that's what shifted my attitude and my mindset to recognize, oh yeah, I got a lot to do. <laughs> Right, this, this seemingly immovable mountain is nothing but a molehill, right? Write a four in the chat if that's something that resonates with you. It's, it's many things in your life that you really will think is an immovable mountain and it is really just a molehill. So, or anthill, termite hill, you know, uh, will be diverse with nature, right? Uh, but yes, so that is that component. And then I just wanted to share one of my favorite uh, quotes, poems, what have you, this is something that, you know, I, I think resonates with many people. So there's a poem, Don't Quit. I won't read the whole thing for sake of time, but it's by Edgar Albert, uh, Edgar Albert Guest. And the parts that I'll highlight is the beginning where it says, when things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit, right? And then the last line, or one of the last lines, so it says, so stick to the fight when your hardest hit is when things seem worst that you must not quit, right? When things seem at their worst is when you must not quit. And I'll point you towards these three different books that I think you should check out uh, that you know, can really add to your understanding of grit in more detail. We have Angela Duckworth's grit, uh, where she does uh, a more like a tangible metric uh, there in terms of quantifying grit. We have uh, David Goggins, who uh, went from an abusive household to becoming a world-class uh, Navy athlete and above. And then someone like uh, Cheryl Sandberg with option B that spoke on the notion of uh, essentially overcoming grief and how that plays an emotional factor in your story. So just keep that in mind. And really just my last key takeaways for you, like I said before, find your true north, right? Reflect on what that is, take some time, meditate. And once you know that, it's much easier to ultimately show yourself that grace and to make sure that you show up as you need to. And then finally, you know, identify some anchors that you can utilize to build your grit, whether that is, you know, any resources available, tutors, counselors, advisors, therapy, uh, or, you know, just other anchors like your story, your memories, your experience. So just something to keep in mind. And here's some information on how to get in contact with me as well. You can follow me on Instagram, on my Facebook, Hopi Speaks. Uh, you can check out my professional profile on LinkedIn, uh, as well as, you know, you can uh, take a picture of that QR code and that will point you towards my website, kopispeaks.com. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to, to get that. But any questions? Feel free to use the, the raise your hand feature. Now, Jalissa, your hand is still up uh, from earlier. Do you, you want to share something now or you have a question? Um, so I have a question. So um, 
based on the presentation, what has worked for you the most in where you are now, like yeah. in consistency or or attitude or what worked best for you? Uh, the thing that worked best for me was creating a routine, right? Uh, once I was existing in a routine, I had that certainty, for example. So that routine could be a mor morning routine. This morning, I had green juice with kale, spinach, uh, and celery. Lime is very unpleasant, but, you know, that's to start my day. Then, you know, I work out, you know, check out my emails. I pray. Uh, I read, uh, you know probably a couple pages if I can. And that routine gets me used to having to show up and perform a certain level of work, right? Uh, on the other side of getting a routine, the things that you have to, somebody mentioned discipline, the things that you have to execute uh, become more so just habits that you do, right? You know, you don't have to think too hard to brush your teeth, right? It's something that, I mean, hopefully, it's something that you've normalized into your process right now. You just wake up, take a shower, brush your teeth. It's not something that you have to, you know, excite yourself for and motivate yourself for. You just go do it. In a similar sense, that's how you have to show up in other way, ways. So by having a routine, uh, and I would also incorporate uh, affirmations in there as well. So literally look in the mirror and say a statement to yourself of, you know, I will, and then you map out let's say the four to five things you will do that day. I am, and you assert the things that you are or seek to become that you feel is value adds to your story or others, right? So just something to consider. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. So next up we have uh, Melis here, Melise, Melise. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, does grit have anything to do with perseverance? Uh, grit and perseverance are aligned wherein grit is your mindset and perseverance, I would say, is more so the description of you showcasing grit, if that makes sense. So grit is the thing that you have and you execute it. And then in the result of that is you persevering. Or, you know, if you've ever played video games, there's some levels where there's no mission that just pops up, survive, right? That's what that perseverance is. And that's what that grid is. So I would say they're essentially the same thing. Uh, and then another question, how is grit revealed in struggle? I think grit can only be revealed in struggle, actually, because now you have to take a, a time to reflect, uh, you know, how do I feel about this moment? You know, in a space of struggle, are you super confident and then just overcome it? You know, are you that type of person or are you in that moment of struggle? Are you uncertain? Are you afraid? Are you uncomfortable? Uh, you know, those are normal feelings, of course, but this is now your opportunity to reflect and say, why do I feel that way? What am I scared about, right? Where is, what is my doubt anchored in? What is the root of that? You know, what do I need to reflect on? You know, I, I wrote an article about on my, my website, I wrote a blog post about imposter syndrome and how for many people, especially after dealing with certain struggles, they start to imbue imposter syndrome into their story, unconsciously, of course, but it's something that is terrifying, right? It, it, and in many cases, I think once that, that is revealed in that moment of struggle, you can take the steps of identifying why, what is the root of it, right? Uh, from there, using your grit and other aspects to disrupt that and redirect that energy uh, into more positive things of, you know, uh, yes, I'm scared. So I'm acknowledging and identifying that. Um, I'm choosing to be better. That's my disrupting it. And then now I'm going to show up and execute. And that's the redirecting that energy. So just keep that in mind. Um, so next up, we have someone else. Uh, do you believe that grit is strengthened by negative emotions? I do not. I think that grit uh, is something that overcomes those emotions, but not necessarily something that, you know, you just sit in it and then now you have more determination. Is you, are, you are overcoming and fighting that disappointment or that fear or that doubt. And the best way to do that is to showcase that grit against it and recognize that that, that feeling Though you feel it is not your identity, it's not your existence, it is not the state that you, that you deserve to be. You get what I mean? 
So while that will show up in moments that require grit, uh, I think that you overcoming it is what strengthens it, not necessarily just existing in that, that notion, right? Uh, and then we have another statement here. You mentioned that you pray and I connect with that a lot. For me, depending on God makes me stronger to walk forward. Uh, and learning about grit, it teaches me more to hold on to my purpose with God and my path professionally. You know, ultimately, and this is, you know, whether you are of any denomination or, you know, you're of, of a spiritual space, I think having that conviction and, and whatever level of that higher purpose, whether it's faith oriented, you know, impact on other people, you know, just a personal conviction to be a better you. I think that that higher calling or greater thing will always allow you to persevere, right? Letting that be essentially your North Star or your true North makes it a lot easier to see just how small the seemingly immovable mountain in front of you is that we call, you know, fear or doubt, uh, you know, whatever issues or challenges that you're facing. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, do we have any other questions? I know we want to wrap up soon. Feel free to use the raise your hand feature and we can bring you up to the forefront here. All right, if there's no further questions, I'll let Wilson do the wrap up tonight then. So yeah, but again, thank you everyone for, for taking the time to kind of listen to this presentation. As I mentioned before, uh, it is more holistic, if you would, you know, not not as a uh, numbers and, and all the the science and stuff. But I, I think it's it's very important that we recognize, you know, even just in reflection, um, where is it that we want to be, right? Who who did who are we? Those types of things, and what is it that we have to overcome and showcase grit in? And I think the best way to do that is to just reflect on these three questions here, as I mentioned. So how can I strengthen my personal grit over time, right? What affirmations can I give myself uh, that let me know or remind me of who I am or who I seek to be, right? So even if you say, let's say you're aspiring to become a doctor, I am Dr. Wilson Darko. And I will arrive to that space by doing, and then you insert what your current path is. Right. I claim it. I deserve to be there. I deserve to do the work. I deserve to show up for me and all other people that need me in this moment. Right. So just just reflect on that. Next up, what is your true north? Right. You know, take some time and take as much time as you need personally to reflect on this. What is your true north? What is your why? What is your big picture? And why is that significant to you? This should not be something that is completely defined by anyone else. This is the answer for you to answer. This is a question for you to answer for yourself to know yourself, right? So just keep that in mind. And then lastly, uh, a way to help you with that, when am I at my best and what skills do I showcase, right? I think being able to answer this question helps you give better insight essentially to the first two, where if you know where you show up at, where I am, you know, when I when I tap into this, I become LeBron James. And I have to tell the story because I'm a big LeBron fan. We flash back to, I believe it was the 2016 championship, down 3-1, right? Uh, against essentially the Monstars, the greatest team assembled in basketball history, arguably. And this man, LeBron James from Akron, Ohio, makes a decision. Of course, his talent is there, but makes a decision that, we are not losing, right? And I'm not losing because I'm showing up in every way possible. Of course, there's the Kyrie Irvings and other players and stuff. But there was, if, if ever there was a moment to showcase grit, I believe that that is one of the pinnacles of it. The greatest final series ever seen. I don't know if Brian agrees with that, but that's just my personal opinion. So just something to consider. But again, like I said, just to wrap up, these are three questions you can reflect on uh, to really, you know, just see, is this something that, that resonates with you? But yeah, if, if there aren't any other questions, then uh, I guess we are, we're good to, to close. 
Wilson, I wanted to just add one thing with this um, this this conversation around grit and resilience and, and great job, everyone tonight. Thank you for your feedback, your engagement. Wilson, great presentation. Um, in that original definition you had, mm -hmm. you had where it was like um, small particles, sand, mm -hmm. and I really want you to think about sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Right. When I hear the word grid, I think about sandpaper. And if you know what um, sandpaper is used for, it uncovers something's original surface. Mm -hmm. And when you think about grid and it being something that's gritty mm -hmm. and it's being applied, pressure is applied to something, it can uncover its original surface. The question is, it can, it can unveil who you are. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that that can't be something that is modified over time. So who you are at 19 and the way you face adversity at 19, 20, 21 will be different than the way you had faced it at 30. So mm -hmm. be okay with what you see when you unveil this. And it may be like, you know what? I need to do better. Great, do better. You can make that adjustment. So I just want you to be um, to know that as you look back and you say, what did this situation unveil about me? Was it something that you liked or didn't like? Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, you do have the ability to make the adjustments and do something about it. Life is a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give yourself, do give yourself that grace uh, for sure. Give yourself some grace, but also make sure that don't give yourself too much grace to where you <laughs> make the change and go about it. <laughs> no, that's a fact. That's a fact. Powerful words, man. Thank you. All right. If we don't have any other questions, uh, I did put the survey link um, in the chat box. Please, please, please uh, go and give us feedback. Uh, and we're right back here next Wednesday, guys. Uh, we want to say thank you for sacrificing your time uh, every Wednesday night with us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Wilson, thank you for another wonderful session. And I challenge you guys to connect with a friend and let them know uh, to come join us every Wednesday night. We look forward to seeing you uh, next week. All right, take care, everyone. Take care.